Welcome to Akbar Academy. Today we are going to look at May June 2013, Paper 3, Variant 3, Question Number 9. We are primarily going to be looking at Rutherford scattering experiment. So let's get right into it. In a laboratory experiment, the isotope uranium 238 is used as a source of alpha particles. Question part A. State one feature of uranium nuclei, 238 nuclei, that is the same for the nuclei of other uranium isotopes. So there's a couple of things that have been mentioned earlier on. Alpha particles. What do you need to know about them? They are helium nuclei. Okay, they're the nucleus of helium, not the atom. Atoms have outer electrons. Alpha particles are helium nucleuses. And they are the most ionizing radiation. But the question here is looking at something that if you do chemistry, I hope you're more familiar with, where they are talking about isotopes. What is an isotope and what are their differences? And here they're addressing both. They're basically saying what is the same for the uranium uh, isotope and what's different? Well, what's going to be the same is the atomic number very often called the proton number. So the number at the bottom. So if I gave you an example of a uranium isotope, it would be, so let's do this one here, 23892. So it has a proton number or an atomic number of 92. All right, so the other uranium isotope that's quite common is uranium 235. So what's the same between these isotopes? What's the same is the atomic number or the proton number. So let me write that down. Or proton number. Next. One feature of uranium-238 nuclei that is different for the nuclei of other uranium isotopes. So in the examples I've given to the left here, what has changed? Well, what's changed is what's often known as mass number, nucleon number, but more importantly, the number of neutrons. Now, let me tell you what I mean. Run out of space here. So, if the bottom number is the number of protons, which also, by the way, happens to equal the number of electrons in a, an electrically neutral atom. So what is the top number given as the top number, as the name suggests, nucleon number? What does that mean? The number of protons and the number of neutrons inside the nucleus. So if we've got uranium-238 and uranium-235, uh, what's going to be different between them? The number of neutrons. And how would you find this? 238 minus 92 for the top one and 235 minus 92 for the bottom one. So this top part, you know, part one and part two has been mostly chemistry based if you've done chemistry before. Next, figure 9.1 shows the alpha particles from the uranium source being directed at a very thin gold foil in a vacuum. So here we've got the gold foil, here we've got uranium source, we've got alpha particles, and we have a movable detector, probably a Geiger-Muller tube. Now this is the main part of the question. What is this all about? It's about an experiment known as Rutherford's scattering experiment. So what's going on here? We've got a radioactive source that's firing alpha particles at this gold foil in a vacuum. Why a vacuum? Because if you know a little bit more about this topic, alpha is the most ionizing radiation. And it will not travel further 
than six centimeters of air approximately. So if we had air in here, the alpha particles wouldn't get very far. So it's important that it's a vacuum. So now all we have is this thin gold foil. Now, the way I would like you to imagine this experiment, as an analogy, pretend we are going fishing with a fishing net. And in this net, I have holes in the net that are as tall and as wide as me. So to give you an idea, I'm like six foot one tall. All right, so imagine we had these really big gaps within the fishing net. Do you think we'd catch little fish? Do you think we'd catch little Nemo? The chances are highly, highly unlikely. Why? Because there are very big holes in the net. What are we likely to catch? We're likely to catch big dolphins, sharks, whales, etc. Not that we would do that, but I hope you get the idea. We would need to catch much bigger fish because the smaller ones would pass through the gaps. Now, that's obvious because we can imagine that scenario. Here, we have gold foil, which to me, you and everyone else, looks perfectly solid. And we are firing these alpha particles, which remember are helium nucleuses. Okay? And we have this detector in behind. Now, the results of this experiment are as follows. The overwhelming majority of alpha particles pass straight through the gold foil, the thing that looks solid to you and I. A few of them, small percentage, are deflected off to the side. In other words, they kind of bounce off at an angle, and very few bounce back. All right, so the overwhelming majority went straight through, some bounce off to the side, deflect off to the side, and very, very few bounce back. What does that tell us? Okay, if you think about it, what it tells us is the atom is mostly empty space. And if you still don't believe me right now, I'm wearing a, so this shirt, imagine I had a t-shirt in front of me and I stretch it out and I pour sand over the top. How likely is it that the sand will fall through the t-shirt. I hope you agree, highly unlikely. But if I was to pour water over the t-shirt, I hope you would agree, at least in time, water would start to pour through the shirt. Why is that happening? It's because the water molecules are small enough to pass through the gaps in the shirt, whereas the sand isn't. The same is true here. The gold foil might look solid to you and I, which it is, but where the helium nucleus is concerned, the alpha particles, they are passing through the gaps between the atoms themselves in the gold foil. Now, what does that tell us? That the atom is mostly empty space. Let me give you one final example. Imagine I am Thor, okay, out of the Avengers, and I take, I'm strong enough to throw a car through space. Okay, I just go into space and I just randomly throw a car into space. How likely is it to hit a planet in our solar system? I hope you agree, highly unlikely, because space, as the name suggests, is very empty. So I want you to imagine it the same way. The sun is like the nucleus. The planets are like the electrons going around the nucleus, but it's mostly empty. The same is true for an atom. Okay? So, to investigate the scattering of alpha particles, a detector is moved to different positions around the very thin gold foil and measurements are recorded. Describe the results from the scattering experiment and explain what they show about the structure of the atom. Right? So I am going to summarize effectively what I told you, but I hope you also understood what I told you. That most of the alpha particles pass straight through. Okay? Very few 
deflect off to the sides. even fewer bounce back. So that's the results of the experiment. But what does that tell us? Okay, it tells us the atom is mostly empty space and i want you to understand why students because the overwhelming majority of them went through what looks like a solid to us the atoms mass is concentrated in a small dense and positively charged nucleus. Why? Now this is something I never really mentioned and is a little bit out of the scope of today. But remember I said very few particles deflect off to the side and even fewer bounce back. Well, what does that mean? It's coming close to something that's very solid. And that's what we call the nucleus, which is small. Why is it small? Because most of the particles went through. Only a few of them bounced off to the side or bounced back. Dense. Okay, why is it dense? Well, it was the alpha particles that bounced off to the side or bounced back. The gold foil didn't move. And the bit that I've not really mentioned, positively charged. Because if you look into this topic in more depth, the alpha particles don't actually hit the nucleus. They deflect off to the side before hitting and they bounce back before hitting. Why is that? Alpha particles are positively charged and the nucleus is positively charged and positive and positive repel. I hope you found that useful. If you did, click the subscribe button, share it with your friends. I'll be posting more very soon. Thank you. Thank you.